Hello everyone, it's Barry here. Welcome to my Virgin Kitchen. I hope you are well. Today we are attempting another mini food, the opposite to giant food. I've been doing this for quite a few years. There is a link to a playlist up here and down below if you have missed any others. The last mini food I did was a mini English cooked breakfast and we're staying on the English theme with me being English. Amazing. Uh, we're doing some English scones, traditionally lovely dessert here in the UK. It's quite an afternoon treat with some tea, uh, cream and jam. Really, really good. Um, I've actually done a standard video recipe on that. There'll be a link up here too if you want to check it out. I really hope you give that a go. But we're doing it teeny weeny style. Will it work? I don't know. They normally do. So let's try it. So as usual, the rules are it must fit on this plate by the end. And I could make super tiny ones, which I'm not going to do because I just think that'd be almost pointless. Uh, we're gonna make them so they're just teeny and bite size. Uh, we've got the standard apparatus here. Also a Play-Doh rolling pin, uh, kindly stolen from the kid's drawer. Uh, this is the bottle cap uh, from uh, vanilla extract, which I think will be a good size to stamp out our scone shapes. And also, um, also stolen from the children thank you children, uh, is a little paintbrush uh, for milk brushing a little bit later on. All right, let's get fake Winnie the Pooh out of the way for a moment. And we're gonna bring in two bowls. So normally you would rub the butter in with the flour, but there's quite a lot of flour to butter ratio. So we're gonna do uh, the opposite. And I'm gonna be very surprised if this doesn't go everywhere. So we're gonna do like about a third at a time and then just rub, oh yeah. Rubbing that butter into that flour, nice. Oh, this is working out really well, folks. <laughs> uh, we're just gonna keep going though. As always, we fight through it. We fight through the mini food battle. Oh, there we go. Half of it was actually on my blooming finger, that's why. I thought it was just like I was just playing around with flour for no reason. So what this does is basically uh, coats the flour in butter and you can see the slight color change there in the pure white flour uh, and that rubbed flour. Oh my gosh, this is going so well. I actually hate this as a normal task when you have to do it like that. It just makes you feel really niggly. Uh, but right, last little bit. Let's get it all on there, stain it in the butter. I'm feeling that's probably as good as oh, I'm gonna get that right now. And yes, I have made an amazing mess, but hey ho, we're gonna carry on. So this step, we're gonna lubricate it with some milk. This is 15 milliliters of milk from a cow's udder. And I kid you not, this is two grams of sugar. <laughs> yes. Getting my uh, random foot treatment tool. And this is hopefully, I can see that it's helping the, the flour already. It's gonna come together and create a sort of dough. Oh yes, folks, check that out. I think we do now have a dough that we can handle. It looks good though. Yay. Okay, so we're gonna lightly flour a surface, our mini chopping board, which was very kindly sent in, thank you very much. And then our dough, check that out. So let's uh, get a bit of flour on there. In comes the uh, Play-Doh rolling pin. Oh yes, this is working a charm. So that is self-raising flowers. It should rise a little bit. The only thing I'm worried about is that it's not gonna go in there for very long, really. Um, so we'll see. So this is just a, a bottle cap from an extract bottle, as I said at the start of the video. And hopefully, if we just pop this out like that, ta-da! I just need to work out how to get that out. Let's just use another gadget thing. Oh, there we go. Check that out. So I'm just gonna repeat that over and over. And whilst doing that, I've managed to make so far uh, some sort of knuckle duster. So of course, with any of the excess dough, again, you just scrunch it up and roll it out again, folks, so you can reuse all of it. All right, folks, so our cut scone shapes are now being brushed with milk. Um, I wasn't sure about this step because obviously this makes them go uh, brown, but with them being so small anyway, that should happen. Uh, this kind of like doing it with beaten egg, but uh, milk does give it a slightly lighter color. So rather than going all out excellent, excellent, uh, we're just gonna go with milk. So normally uh, you'd put these in the oven now for 12 to 15 minutes until golden and well risen. I don't know how long it's gonna take. So we're just gonna shove them in the oven and see what happens. While that's in the oven, I've made a little bit of a mess. So I'm gonna have a bit of a tidy up and we'll have the finale. Ladies and gents, I have just taken them out of the oven. Check that out. They've risen, they're golden brown. There's no point putting them on a wire rack because they'll fall through if they want to cool down. And they're so small, they'll cool down in a minute anyway. So let's serve it up. Now, I don't like tea, but I do like coffee. And what I've done is made a little coffee here. And I'm just gonna squirt it into <laughs> this jug. Oh yes, because you need to serve it up with tea or coffee. Ideally tea, because they call it afternoon tea, but for 
for non-tea lovers like myself, it's afternoon coffee. And if you remember, this syringe helped us really well to make the fried egg in the cooked breakfast. It's now working well, although that doesn't look like the colour of coffee to me. And I also can't believe I haven't burnt myself doing this. Here we are then, folks. This is the chosen one. We have halved it like so. Um, some of you might say, why didn't you put raisins in it? Well, if I did put raisins in it, I'd have to really chop them up. And I don't really want to do it. I don't like my scones or raisins in. Completely optional. There's also a huge debate on what goes first, the jam or the cream. Well, my friends, have you ever tried putting jam on top of cream? It's very tricky. So we are going to go with the jam first. And of course, if you like the cream the other way around, you can just flip it upside down. Yeah. And here's some cream, which I just whipped up earlier. Oh yeah, get on there. Come on, come on. Yes. Oh yes, <laughs> that looks great. We stick our lid on top. Oh my God. Oh my God, what does that even mean? There is our mini scone, but it's not complete without our mini coffee. I mean, tea, yeah, it's tea. Oh, look at that, amazing. Let's not forget the milk. <laughs> mixy, mixy, mix. That looks more like tea now. I'll take that. There we are, proper stonking, and as usual, the Queen does approve. Oh, look at this lovely afternoon tea, coffee and scone. Oh, lovely. Nom, 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 nom. Uh, um, no, it's just for scale purposes. That's just a two pence coin here in the UK. It's time to have a nibble and for the first time ever, a drink. I'm joined by Phoebe. All right, mate? Yeah. I've made her a teeny one too. Do you want to show it up? Uh, there it is. OK, I'm just going to have my coffee a moment. It's very cold. <laughs> But that is what, I mean, the, the colour of it did not do it justice. It looked like some sort of sample, but that was actually coffee, I promise. Here we go then, Phoebe's ready? Yeah. So, scone down in one. Oh, is that good? Yeah. Really good? What does it taste like? Um, scone? It tastes um, of a um, big scone. Yes, it did. Yes. Um, they, as normal, I'm so chuffed that it's turned out good, but it does taste just like the real thing. So if you want to try out real scones, there's a recipe uh, link up here, as I said at the start of the video. Remember to check out the rest of the mini food playlist for loads more inspiration. And do let me know down below any other mini foods I haven't done yet that you'd like to see next.